This lesson is for grade one, two, threes, and fours. I wanted you to write me a story. It was to be done in purple mash using to write a story. I was so excited to read your stories and then found that so few of you had done it. It was a bit of a disappointment. So I've decided to redo that so that you all have a chance to do it again. Those of you who have done it can just like add on a little bit more to make it more interesting. Just add on and keep writing. It's actually just what are we going to get out of this lesson? Let me just go over that. We're going to use the learners who did their work as a guide to help us to learn so that we can see where we can improve and make ourselves far better writers. At the end of this lesson, you should have some idea of where to go in Purple Mash to do this writing activity. So it should explain the way you're going to get there and what tools you're going to use. When we finished, we'll go to Purple Mash and we'll do the activity. I'll have a good look at it and I'll mark it. And when I've marked all your work, I'll come back to you and I'll tell you what we did that was good. We'll look at giving out rewards to those of us who have done a great job. And we'll also look at our weaknesses so that we can build and make them into strengths. Part of learning involves looking at your mistakes and then realizing that that's not the way to do it. I could take a different way and I can improve upon it. So I'm sure you'll be quite okay with me looking at your mistakes because I'm only there to try help you. After all, we want to all be very creative and now's the opportunity to get writing. Writing is one of the best ways of getting to understand yourself and the world around you. Reading and writing are probably two of the most important activities that you're going to have to do at school. And you really should do it as much as you can, especially if you want to be creative. Creativity is a very good thing. So read and write. There are so many interesting things you can do when you write. Take for example, number one, you could start a little magazine with you and your friends writing a magazine or starting your own magazine. Number two, you could share a story on the school blog that's in Purple Mash or one of the display boards that your teachers put up so they can read it and other members of our school can appreciate your creativity and your story or your writing. Other moms and dads, other learners would all like to appreciate what you've written. So many people are going to ask you about who's your favorite author, who's your favorite writer. And one of the important things is to appreciate your own writing, to read it and say, I love reading my own writing. And that's something you're going to need to develop. Let's look at some of the learners work, see what they've done. Here's the girl with the yellow hair and the red dress. Look at the way those arms just extend out with those hands. Those large hands make it such a strong picture. And such wonderful use of colors. Look at the red dress, the yellow hair, and there's the shadow of that dog in the background. And this learners use the texture of a wall to make as if this person is standing on a wall. It's really marvelous. Very, very good work. The picture says a lot. You've got to use color well, and you've got to use the tools that you have available. Let's have a look at this one. The previous picture had the shadow of a dog, but look at this one. The dog's white and you can hardly see it against the white background. It's important that you try to get your writing laid out properly. Look at the way the writing has got white spaces in it. It's important to just check it, and double check it and make sure that everything's spaced out properly. There's too many white spaces there. This piece was done by Emma Chiari. I'd just like to read her story, me in my room with my mum, hashtag want to go back to school. That hashtag want to go back to school is something we can relate to. It's very clever. Great work, Erica. And your drawings are so expressive. It makes everyone want to just read your story. And here we have Zoe Lota. Zoe, I initially thought that this was a zebra. 
I then read her story and realized that I was wrong. This is not a zebra, but a mattress. Last night we moved a mattress in my mom and dad's room. This morning I did my homework. After that I will eat breakfast. That's a marvelous picture of this mattress. Do take care to check your spelling before you hand it in. It's very important. Here's a bit of writing with Tabisi. Now it's very important if you look at this, you can see he's written so much and it's going off the page. I'd have to scroll down to be able to read the rest of it. Shorten what you write. Don't write so much in this space. Rather do and add a new page. It would have made it a lot better. And I can see he wrote, the lockdown was made to protect us from COVID-19 by the president in March 2020. Tabisi has recorded a historical event. So in this case, Tabisi, I would have suggested that you open up a new page, do another picture and add the next bit of your writing on that page. Maybe you can do that when you fix it all up. Finley, I think you've used your tools really well. You can see you've used the texture tool to make this wonderful yellow sun and your fluffy clouds are using some of the purple mesh painting tools very well. It's very important to practice how to use all the tools and to get to know the tools so that you can use them. Finley Cook, you're going to have to show us how to do such marvelous work. And I like the amount of writing that you've put there. Today is a nice sunny day. This morning I woke up and played with Woody. You're going to have to tell us who Woody is, fin um, Finley. Who is Woody? What Finley showed us is get to know how to use those tools. Practice your writing and get mum and dad to check it afterwards. That is before you hand it in to your teacher. Ah, look at this one. It's called Joker. It's always important to try and make your artwork relatable. That means other people can see a connection. And you can see that's linked up to a famous movie called The Joker. Mum and dad may have raved somewhat about that movie. I actually didn't recognize that this is The Joker. But when I read the text, Joker, then I knew, oh, the white and the red had been very cleverly put together to make the picture of the Joker. When you do your story, try to make it relatable. So whatever you write at the bottom in your story, you can see that the picture and the writing connects. Ah, this one was done by Jean-Luca. And he had a team, the foot Klein. I don't know what Klein is. And they had a secret base that no one could find. Remember, it's always important to get mom and dad to check your mistakes before you hand it in so that we don't get confused. We must try to be very clear when we write. So check for mistakes. Here we're looking at something that Riley did. Riley Hudson. Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived on Pompel. His name was Eric. He was a horse trainer. He had a customer with a weird horse. The customer said, sell my horse. Why? asked Eric. And I can't read what's below there. So when you do your story, try to make everything fit in. We don't want to have to scroll down. Riley, I'd suggest that you break up your writing. So we can see more in that box. In this instance, you've got a beautiful picture, but look, there's nothing written in the story. It would have been wonderful to have a story that would go with such a wonderful picture. So you've got to put some words down. You've got to write something in that white space. We need a good story in there. This picture is so creative. You can see the smiley face, the beautiful colors of the rainbow, and it even makes a statement, our beautiful world. However, there's no writing in the story area. So let's try get that, that we fill the white space at the bottom with our written story. We want to use words. I'd like us to all get involved in this work. I'd like you to add to the current work that we've done. So I want you to go on and do more. Let's look at the activity in Purple Mash.
where will we go to create a story? So here we're in Purple Mesh. We're going to click on Tools. And then we're going to go to this one over here to create a story. And we'd launch the app. But obviously, you're going to find it in the To Do section. That's where we're going to find the work that our teachers have set. So you click on that little red button. And all these blue colored bits of work are showing the work that we must do at the moment. They are the current bits of work. That's the work we must do now. And the bottom part is green because that's finished work. Look at all the marking that Mr. Bradley has. He has to go through all of these classes. He's got to read everybody's story. Now let's go to Purple Mash so we can actually have a good look at the two writer story. And I'm already in. I'm just going to show you some of the tools. I'm using the Circle Fill tool. Red showing the heat of the sun. I'm using the Line tool to show the rays of the sun. I'm holding down my mouse to drag these lines out making these sun rays and we can choose whatever color we want so you can go over here to access all the different colors i'm just going to scroll through those colors look over there if i click on that arrow that white arrow i can get through and choose which color i want to use and that's the paint bucket tool filling in the blue of the sky let's go with the yellow and click on the sun to make it yellow it's important that we remember that we have to write a story and we mustn't just want to paint our artwork. So I'm writing my story, the sun shone down onto the earth. And then I would write a lot more. Let's look at the circle outline tool. That's this one. The outline is in yellow. And then you'll get the circle fill tool, which is going to be that one over there. I'm just going to fill this with a white. Oh, I don't seem to be able to get one on top of the other fitting properly. Let's see if I can do it again with the a black outline. I'm trying a little bit better, but still off. I'm going to make eyes with the circular outline tool. And that's the fill tool, circular fill tool. And I want to get a glint of light on the eyes. So look at this. If you glint those eyes, you can see they're looking in the right-hand direction from the point of view of the ball. I'm drawing a ball. From our point of view, the eyes are looking left. I'm going to draw the nose of the freehand tool just using a simple black outline. There we go, finish the nose and now the mouth. Giving human characteristics to a ball. Now in some way trying to show how the ball would bounce. So this would be invisible. Just drawing these little lines and those are showing the direction taken by this bouncing ball. You're going to have to try to use these tools very creatively. There, I'm trying to show something that would normally be considered invisible. You obviously are going to want to add an extra page. You're going to go to this purple arrow at the bottom, and that takes you to the next page. A new page to fill with artwork, as well as a written piece in the writing section at the bottom. The page is blank, and you're just needing to fill it in. Let's go back to our bouncing ball. So I'm going to go on this arrow. And there we go, all the way back. We navigate with those two arrows at the bottom, the purple ones. You can do some animations by going up here. Let's click on that. I'm going to press on this down arrow. And look at that. That's the animation. If I choose that one, it spins. Click OK. And when I press the play button, I've got this animation. I think that spinning animation relates very well to a bouncy ball. I'm just showing you what you can do, but you've got to be creative and you've got to experiment a lot more. There's your animation. And look at that one. It just zooms out. And sometimes animation just isn't necessary. Our picture just seems to be disappearing into the distance. Let's go into how to save this work. You don't want to lose it. You want to keep it. So we go to the red button on the top right hand side. We click on the red button on the top right hand side and this comes up save and exit and we can just write in a file name we can just give our file a name press the save button i'm not really going to save this file because i want to just use it as an example now i need to speak about the written part the writing you've done get mom and dad to check your spelling before you hand it in especially if your teacher gave you work to do it should be checked before have your friends read your story and give you a little bit of feedback. It'll help you to improve it. In my next lesson, I'll start talking about how you would hand in to-dos and how you should write your questions in the 
comment section when handing in work. I will have a good look at your questions and comments and try to answer them in the next lesson. I will post some of the work on blogs and display boards so we can all have a good look at what's being done. Thank you for watching today's lesson. We've looked at a sample of different learners' work. We've learned from that experience. We've shown different tools that we can use, like the paint bucket tool, line tool, and the outline tools, and all the rest. I never mentioned, though ought to have mentioned, that whenever you do writing, do a first draft. Just write down your story and don't worry too much about what you write down. In the second draft, you'll change it and improve it. Get your friends to read your story and give you feedback. Get mom, dad, or somebody else to check your spelling and grammar, and then you hand it in to your teacher. So first of all, you'll do a first draft, second draft, check it out. A big thank you to everybody. I appreciate you watching this video.